Self-talk without real work is just a lie. Yeah. So my self-talk is me reminiscing back on the struggle to get to this moment. Your mind has a tactical advantage over you at all times. It knows your weaknesses, it knows your strengths, and it will guide you into your nice comfort zone. Yeah. Wanna be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's live your best believe life and learn how you can persevere in anything. Also, if you want to have more confidence and self-love, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. Everything yeah. I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, reprogram your mind with David Goggins. Your mind has a tactical advantage over you at all times. It knows your weaknesses, it knows your strengths, and it will guide you into your nice comfort zone. Yeah. We have to reprogram our mind to get a, like, like a different vantage point so then you know how to mm -hmm. be in charge of yourself yep. versus your mind being in charge of you. Mm -hmm. Let's say for shits and giggles, I'm training for a 100 mile race. Yeah. Let's say a 200 Just mile. for and giggles, I'm training for a 100 mile race. Right. Okay, good. So let's say I'm training for a 100 mile race and I get to mile 50. Yeah. And I feel like shit. Mm -hmm. And like everybody else, my mind gets soft. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm human. Yeah. I'm not some damn, you know, hybrid creature that was formed from the heavens above. No, not. Human. I suffer. I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. I don't like it. Yeah. So my mind starts to get weak and we start to forget about how badass we are. I call that the cookie jar, but it's not about the cookie jar right now. Yeah. This is about self-talk. Yeah. But, but the cookie jar kind of goes to self-talk too. It. Yeah. It's a piece of it. So basically what I do here is you have to make sure that your mind doesn't become spastic. Mm -hmm. When it's suffering, when it's in pain, all it wants to do is find the easy way out, which is usually quit. Mm -hmm. If you quit, the pain goes away immediately. Yeah. You gotta give yourself enough Energy and fuel in your mind to stay just a little bit longer so you can talk yourself into staying for the whole thing. Yep. And this is how it works. Most of us never start anything cold. If you're gonna go to college, you gotta study your ass off. If you wanna run a 100 mile race, a marathon, if you wanna go be Mr. Olympia, if you wanna go be a scientist, a doctor. Be one of the best salespeople on the planet. You be gotta work. You gotta work. But this and is you what gotta you gotta build, you, you gotta, gotta build, build. Up to that. But what happens is, in that moment, when we need self-talk, when we're failing, and we're in our worst spot possible, yep. we forget the, all the buildup to where we're at today. We forget a, how, how much work we put in. We forget that we put years, yeah. years, maybe not into making these dials, but to getting where you're at today. To become this person. To become this person, to be in a position to make this money, or whatever the fuck you wanna make, whatever you wanna do in your life. Yeah. We forget that. We forget that journey on what it took for us to get in this moment to make the right decision. Yeah. So that's my self-talk is this. Okay, I wanna get the fuck out of here, man. I'm done. Then I remember this. You ran 2,000 miles training to be in this moment right now. Mm -hmm. We forget that. Yep. We forget the three o'clock in the morning runs or, or getting up early for work or whatever you're doing. We forget all that in that moment of suffering. I remind myself, yeah. I only have 50 more miles. I put in six months of training. You did 67,000 pull-ups. 67,000 pull-ups, that's right. 30, right? Exactly. Like, this is no big deal. We forget all yeah. of that. Yeah. So what I do, my self-talk, is basically going back down memory lane yeah. of all those <laughs> up days. I ran the rain or I had to study real late at night and I didn't want to do it, but I did it to get here. Yeah. That's the hook. That is the hook. That's the hook. I wanted to get here. Yeah. Now you're here and now you want to quit. Yeah. So you got to be mindful, but this, but this thing about it, if you haven't put in any hard work to reflect on, you're fucked. Yeah. So yeah. there is no self. Because you got nothing to pull back it's on. It's just it. a lie. You nothing to say, hey, you've done this before. That's right. Or you've done something like this That's before. Right. All this, all this, like, people want to be all positive, all this positive talk, it doesn't work if it's a lie. Like, 
if you didn't study for your big exam mm -hmm. and you go into it saying, I'm going to pass it, yep. no, you're not. Yeah. You're going to fail it. Yeah. That self-talk is not going to work. Self-talk without real work is just a lie. Yeah. So my self-talk is me reminiscing back on the struggle to get to this moment. Yeah. And that tells me we're not quitting today. Yeah. Not today. You had a goal to become like the all-time pull-up champion of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Guinness Book of World Records. Right. What did you do to visualize to get over the hurdle and to, to make that real for you? So basically you have to put yourself in the moment a million times while I'm sitting here. First of all, it takes total quietness. Mm -hmm. We live in a world that's so busy and so active and moving so fast. Right now, I am sitting with Tom Ferry. Yep. My mind is sitting with Tom Ferry. Yep. It's not talking to Tom Ferry while thinking about, my God, I gotta order some more books, I'm sold out of here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing about visualization. Yep. You must make sure to silence out all the bullshit of life, yep. which is very hard to do. It is very hard. Because the, your, your, your visual picture must be clear as shit. It has to be clear. It can't be like, kind of in and out like a like a fuzzy TV you got to see it it has to become real you got to take a snapshot of it a million times put in the bank mm -hmm. that snapshot of me was getting that 4021 pull up yeah. knocked out cuz the record was 4020 yeah i visualized that over and over and over again i visualized what i was going to say cuz the guy's name was Stephen Highland i was thinking like what you're going to say to him going to say to him yep. on video when i yep. finally got his ass yep so I visualized yeah. success, uh -huh. but then I went through, that's the, that's the fun part. Yeah. I have to do 4,020 pull-ups to get to that 4,021 pull-up. Yeah. I know now, because it took me three chances yep. to get it. All those failures, they were great for me to examine where I was up at along the way. So I take all that and I, and I put in the bank as far as visualization, okay, when I get to 2,500 pull-ups, my hands start to rip. Okay, I get ready for that. So I started visualizing, how am I gonna handle the pain? Mm -hmm. Okay, then you start visualizing, okay, my, my nutrition was off. You start visualizing all these things because yeah. you have to mimic it a million times, but I can't mimic 4,020 pull-ups no. by doing it. But you can see but all the milestones where you failed. That's right. And see yourself going beyond it. That's right. Yeah. So that, that was my big thing about I, I had to walk in, get the chalk, see, I, I had to see everything over and over and over again. And when I realized I had to keep that visual, that picture in my head mm -hmm. for 17 hours. It took me 17 hours to break that record. Yeah. So for 17 hours, while I used to be loud everywhere I went, I put these headphones in. Yeah. I never listened to music, but I listened to one song going the distance, you know, for 17 hours. It's two minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah. For 17 hours, I had that in. That's a lot of Rocky. A lot of Rocky. And I just went here. Yeah. For, and so I was able to visualize every rep. Yeah. So I, I visualized my hand placement, making sure that felt right before I got going. Mm -hmm. I didn't ignore all the little pains. My hands got sweaty. Okay, that means I was aware of everything. That means, my, okay, my hand's about to rip. It's getting sweaty. Wipe it off. Be aware. Everything, I was totally in the moment because of how I visualized everything. Now I have a special bonus clip from David on how to run into your fears that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, where do you need to reprogram your mind? Number two, what obstacles will prevent you from doing it? And number three, how will you overcome those obstacles when they come up? And if you made it this far in a video and you are committed to making a change, I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag, believe down in the comments as well. The most important conversation you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, eventually you'll act on it. Mm -hmm. And my self-talk was the most disgusting self-talk of all time. Mm. So the sewer of my mind, like I said, you have to go back in there and fix things. A lot of us are afraid, like right now, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have found me on this show. I was too embarrassed to tell you I stuttered, mm -hmm. I lied, mm -hmm. all these different things, getting beat up, getting bullied, whatever happened. But that's where the true transformation starts to happen. When you can look at people, anybody, thousands of people, one person and say, hey, this is who I am. 
and this is where I have to fix myself. Mm -hmm. And this is where it really happened. I thought it happened when I was in, you know, 19, 18 years old trying to pass this military test. Right. It happened here when I was almost 300 pounds spraying for cockroaches, mm. making $1,000 a month. Mm. And, you know, people called me dumb. People, my dad called me so many things, it's not even funny. Mm. Being beat just stripped me of all self-esteem. This is when I realized I was alone mm. on this earth. Yeah. I have God but alone on this earth and I have to fix everything. So this is where I started to develop an indestructible mental toolbox. Okay. So I came home one night after spraying for cockroaches at Ecolab, and literally I was praying at Steak and Shake, and I would go across the street to 7-Eleven. I had a 45-minute commute home. So I worked from 11 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. I had a 45-minute commute home, and my, my stop would be, you know, Steak and Shake, chocolate and milkshake, across the street, 7-Eleven, box of mini chocolate donuts and I would eat that on the way home. Yeah, sure. When I come home, I turn the TV on, I take my shake because the box of donuts were, I mean, they were killed. Oh, yeah. I kill those. Yeah. Go back to the back, turn the, you know, turn the TV on and take a shower. Listen to the TV while I'm taking a shower. This day, I heard these guys on the TV talking about Navy SEAL, toughest, class 224. So I heard stuff about Navy SEALs. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the baddest of the baddest. Yeah. And I'm, so I come out, and I'm watching this show while I'm drinking my shake. And when you're watching the show of guys who are putting out there, and they're quitting, quitting left and right. Oh, sure. Just can't handle it. They're going through hell week. They show them going through first phase, second phase, third phase, and they're dropping like flies. I looked in this one guy's eyes who was ringing the bell to quit, to put his helmet down out of Navy SEAL training, and I saw myself. And I saw what everybody said I was going to be, which was nothing. What I said I was going to be, that, that, that conversation you have, mm -hmm. that's who I was. So that's why I lied to people to tell them a different version of the truth. Sure. I had to make all those lies reality. Mm. I had to make them real. I had, I had to become a real person. So that's when I put in my mind that I'm going to go to the toughest military training on the planet. Mm. And where it has the most water the thing I was scared of the most, mm -hmm. I had to go back. So a lot of us run away from our fears. Sure. And we box ourselves in mm -hmm. to a, a lifestyle of this is all we can do. Right. Cause I'm afraid of everything outside this box. Yeah. So I'm comfortable inside this box. I jumped the box. Oh, you did, yeah. For the first time in my life. Mentally, I jumped the yeah. box and said, hey, I, I, I gotta come out here and play. If you want more David Goggins, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. You're gonna find peace from going to war with yourself. Whenever life would start getting good for me, God would throw a nice anchor and mm -hmm. stop me right there.